Hi everyone, Kier here with a new tutorial showing you how to control your cables visualization using your mobile phone. So one question you can ask is why would you need to control your uh, visualization with the phone? And if you think about it and you create you know, interactive experiences or museum experiences, you are often limited if you just use the 2D screen to the mouse, keyboard, and it would be a very nice addition to be able to add more sensors such as uh, the thing that you can have with your mobile phone, an accelerometer, or maybe the you know the acceleration, the um, orientation of the device, uh, how many times someone clicks on the phone, all this kind of stuff. And as you will see in this tutorial, it's actually very easy to create a patch that captures this kind of events, those events, and send them to the, our visual, like the final visualization patch. And so we have two patches, one that creates the events and one other that receive the event and display stuff. So let me show you how it works uh, with this patch. When if you look at it, it seems like a very black empty patch. I have my phone right now. And as you notice, I'm going to click here. I'm going to ask me to activate. Would you like to access mo motion and orientation? Yes. And now when I'm moving my phone, you see on your screen that the whole patches uh, patch is moving and this it doesn't need to be on the same Wi-Fi. This works across the globe, right? It goes straight through, through the internet. So here I map the acceleration so that when depending on how you move if you like, you know, you're a party, you're dancing like this and you see that the patch is moving and reacts in real time. So today we're going to learn how to make uh, this setup, which is pretty simple. And hopefully you would come up with new ways of, you know, uh, harnessing the power of your phones or any other uh, mobile or even other sensors such as you know uh, brain waves um, heart rate uh, you know uh, face detection all this kind of stuff to control and be more creative with your visualizations so without further ado let's dig in we need two patches so um, the first one would be the patch we use to basically send the events right to uh, the other patch that we're going to create which will receive the events and display some stuff. So, as always, I have this new uh, patch, empty patch. If you watch my previous videos, you know how to make one. You go on cables.gl and you create a new patch. And you, you come up here with an empty, you know, blank uh, space like this. So, first thing we, we do, as we always do, uh, we go on uh, and add the main loop. So, I'm using the dev version right now, which should be exactly the same for you. So just prefix the URL with dev so you have access to more uh, newer ops. But maybe in this case, we'd actually don't really need to, but I don't know, just a, a habit. So the main loop, and I can, I can show you actually that if you switch to the main, uh, to the dev version, you can also uh, use the new uh, UI, which is actually using um, WebGL instead of SVG. So if you go here, my editor preference, you know, by default, it's, it's, it's activated. So now we, we have the, we can even refresh the page and it should load the WebGL view. So let's try it again, main loop. You see, it's a bit different from the usual patch if you come from the SVG uh, render. And it's much faster. Why we use this? Because now we can have patches with, uh, with I don't know, 10,000 ops in the same view and doesn't lag anymore. So uh, I would strongly encourage you to switch to the new GL UI view. So coming back to our patch, the main loop, we always need the main loop. And, you know, I always try to always put this node, the clear color to change the background just to make sure that, you know, it's, it's not buggy, right? So we have something great. Okay. Now, what do we need to do? We need to capture the mobile uh, sensor events. And to do so, we basically, you know, especially if you have like a, a recent, recent phone, you need to ask permission. And Fortunately, there is a cool op that basically gets the, all the sensors that, you, we, that we need here. But you notice that it's called motion sensor and you need to trigger it to request the permission. And if you don't, then nothing works. And I was a bit stuck like this. So you need to be basically trigger it by hand. So what you could do is to make sure that the user has to touch the visualization on the phone once, ask for permission, say OK, and then everything starts. So to do that, what we could do is uh, put the touch screen up that basically gets the 
position of the finger, but also check this output. You have touch start and touch end. So basically the end of the touch event. And now we can trigger the motion sensor. Just to be sure, you can also put a trigger once. Remember, this is uh, filtering how many times uh, the, the trigger goes through. So only once here and also activate the motion sensor. So here, now when the user will touch the screen, the cables will ask the permission to you as a user to accept whether or not you want to access orientation. And from that, we can do the rest. Okay, so this is like the, the, the tricky part if you're not familiar with the web API. And this is because you know, by default now all the apps or everything, when they want to track someone or get some of the microphone access, image access and so forth, you basically need to ask for permission because there was so many abuse uh, with this kind of techniques before. So now you have to accept it and then we can use the data. So let's investigate what we have with the motion sensor. When you click here, this is basically what the phone can give us. The orientation of the phone, the acceler acceleration in all directions, three directions, without the gravity and also the rotation rate. So for this patch, I think we could um, rely on the, so what I did was to use the acceleration to change the background, like this pulsing background, and um, use the, um, the orientation in another way, we're gonna see how, to control the rotation of the object that we see uh, on screen, right? So let me move my face here so that it's clear. Um, okay, now we have this kind of data. So it would be nice to, uh, to basically capture it and be able to send it. And how do we send things on the web? Where well, there's several ways you can send through uh, HTTP request to a server. And you can also uh, send it via, via web sockets, which is what we're going to use here. It's much faster. We don't have the overhead of basically having the whole HTTP server running. And, uh, but for to do that, we will basically need uh, a server, a web socket server. And fortunately for us, a cables, the cables team already created uh, an, op, an op that works with this socket cluster framework, which basically uh, so we can read everything, you can basically receive and send multiple messages, it's pretty fast, the order is guaranteed, and as you can see, we have clients, so we have libraries that work in JavaScript, which is what we use in cables, but you can also, for instance, send events from Android, from Python, from iOS, right? So you can install and communicate directly uh, to the using this framework to another uh, patch on the web. But the cool thing is because we can run uh, patches via, uh, via a web view on your phone, we actually don't need any of those. We can only you know, stay in cables land and basically use the, the create this patch that works only on the phone and then sends the value using this client back to the other patch which displays what we want. So uh, let's, let's go back here. Um, to, to send some values, we need to set the node. And fortunately for us, the node has already been created. It's called socket, sorry, socket cluster, right? And uh, and then, so we have this socket cluster and check it out. The, the, you have different parameters that you can use. And the first most important part is the host name. So where the server needs to exist somewhere. And the cable team is, you know, um, um, very generously giving us uh, one of their dev servers. So as long as you, you know, just testing things out, experimenting, it's fine to ask it to, to basically use their own server. But if you want to, of course, run something into production, I would suggest to roll your own. So basically install this uh, basic uh, socket cluster on your on a machine somewhere. And maybe I'll do another tutorial on how to do that if you are familiar. You need to do a bit more of programming, so if you're not familiar with all this stuff, it, it may be a bit more complex. But for the for yeah for this uh, tutorial, we can basically use the, the default URL, which is this one. I already copy-pasted here. It is uh, ws for websocket.cables.gl. Um, so when we connect this to the host name, we basically connect to the server. And then we need some other options, which are basically the path. We don't touch it. The port, you don't touch it. Allow, send, well, you need to send some value, so you need to be able to allow that, that so that it works, okay? It needs to be active as well, right? So that it, it starts to send values. And basically now, as you can see, this channel, basically this is an ID that was created for us 
that's identify or patch, right? Because you can have one server, but many cl clients that go through the server and you know routes the their data to somewhere else in the on, on the web. So we need a way to identify what they call a channel, so that it's a bidirectional communication just for us, right? So by default, uh, they we create this kind of uh, universal ID UID that we can copy, right, and paste for now in another string because we're gonna use it. To, uh, from the other patch would display the value so that we basically communicate on the same channel, right? So I'm gonna paste this here and I'm gonna call it, you know, um, I don't know, UID, channel UID, okay? It's there somewhere. Saving my patch and forget to save. So now we have a way of sending values, of basically setting up the, 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 the channel, the, the socket, but we need to actually send the values so how do we do that? Well, it's very simple. We have ops to do so. So if you just type socket here, you would have socket, send, string, number, object, trigger, boolean, and then send and the same uh, other uh, ops to receive basically, which is a typo everywhere, but it's to receive the, the values that you just sent. So we could say maybe I'm gonna send an array and this array is gonna basically contain the three accelerator, uh, acceleration values. So we need to pack three individual values here into one array. How do we do that? Well, it's uh, simple. We have an op that is called array set number. And we have set number three, which is, uh, you know, we always use this kind of stuff in WebGL because it's always position, which is three values, color, most of the time with three values as well, rotation and scale. So there's a, if it's a pack of three values, you, you have in cables, you have most of the ops that ends with three that you know basically have three inputs for what we need. So here we have uh, index, uh, acceleration. So how does it work? This op works by setting an array that is already pre-created and say, okay, at this particular index, I'm setting value X, Y, and Z. So I'm, I'm taking three boxes in my array. Let's say I have an array of uh, three values, so I'm gonna start at index zero, the first box, and say I'm gonna put X, then Y, then Z, right? So we need to first to create an, an array that so that we, we can set it. So to do so, we already covered this in previous tutorials. We can create an array. Say I want an array of length three. My default value is gonna be zero. So I'm gonna put this here aside, create an array, and wait, we need to execute it. So it will be able to send and set the values. And we can basically, uh, for now, say each time I'm running, so 60 times per second, um, basically set the values and sense, so, you know, get the data from the phone and set it uh, as fast as you can in this array and send this array as fast as you can as well. So now we can uh, get the acceleration here. So X, Y, and Z, just like this. And then now my array is, uh, so we cannot really test it uh, unless you run this on your phone, right? Unless you run this patch. So basically to test, uh, you would need to save the patch, open it in a new window, make it a private, right? So when you have a patch settings by default, it's, it's private, you can put a secret URL. And you notice that because I'm using, um, I cannot really publish the patch publicly because I'm on the dev version, but I can still, you know, get this this dev URL. So you take this URL, you send it to your phone. What I do is you, you know, via message or you know, you put the, you send a uh, note to yourself that you can open the phone if you don't want to type the whole URL. And then we can get this the values here. And by default, they will be zero because we are creating the whole patch on the computer, right? So just to, to show you um, uh, how to, to make the, everything works. So it's completely normal that it's at zero, but you can still simulate the values, right? Instead of taking this, you can create some random numbers and move them by hands and to make sure that, you know, the, co the communication channel between this patch and the receiving patch is working. But it, this should work as you saw on the, on the demo. So we have the, the data that's gonna change, the acceleration, right? And then we basically need to send it. And if you check this uh, socket array, we need to first connect to the socket itself, right? So we need to connect the object, the communication link. Uh, we have the topic, which is, you know, how you want to label the data that you sent. By default, it's main, but here we can call it, I don't know, acceleration. 
and we need to make sure that we subscribe to the, this topic on the receiving end so that the data that we send is also you know being read back on the other end so we call it acceleration it's called the topic here and uh, we need uh, to basically send the trigger. So how, how you know, to send the value uh, while, uh, to, to actually send it over the network. So what I noticed is that if you try to run it at 60 FPS, like this like default main loop, it's too fast and the server gets, uh, you know, start to drop frames and it's, it's very laggy. However, if we just send at 30 FPS, it's still very smooth to the user and it works pretty well. So to do so, we can uh, use a trigger limiter and say compute the time it needs to you know, 30 FPS divided by a second, and you have the the, the trigger, the, how many times it should be triggered, like, I don't know, uh, 32 milliseconds. What you could also do is put another ops that we didn't cover so far, it's called the nth trigger, and that basically says, okay, I'm letting one of the trigger only, you know, out of, one out of two. So this is the flow mode. And you see that this, this guy here is going twice as fast. So we press F, right, to have this flow mode. And you see that basically this is run 60 times per second. And then we one out of two, we block, and the rest will let it through. So this is actually sent uh, at uh, 30 FPS. And this should be smooth enough for the receiving patch and also not to you know, destroy the whole server and makes it uh, responsive. So this is like the parameters that I, uh, that I got and was uh, working quite well for me. So we have this. So now we are in theory sending uh, the, accelerator, the acceleration of the phone to the other receiving patch, right? But we don't have any receiving patch yet, so we need to um, create it. So let's, let, let's create that. I'm opening a new patch, create empty project. First rename it. So I'm gonna call it, you know, uh, mobile controlled uh, control patch tube because I have the same one in my hand. Um, I'm gonna put it as this and I'm gonna save it. Okay. And and I don't know, it didn't work because when you change the license, uh, it resets. I don't know. Weird. Okay. So now we are on the receiving end and we can have both run in parallel on our, on, on our computer, it doesn't really matter. We do the same thing, clear color. And now, just to make sure that it works, we, be, we want to unpack the acceler uh, acceler accelerometer values and change the colors of our patch, right? So uh, how do we do that? It's uh, pretty simple as well. Let me just uh, get it on my end so I don't make any mistakes. Um, we need to create a socket cluster again to be receive the data, right? So I'm, I'm going to go here and copy paste this. Control C, Control V. So I'm sure that I have the same uh, um, channel ID and I have the same server URL, right? So here, when you create a new socket cluster, it generates a new channel, but we need to basically have the one that we set before, right? The one that we created here. That ends with 36. So that to make sure that it's the same, right? So now we are talking on the same, uh, you know, the same channel, and we need the same topic now to basically get the, the values that we need. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to be able to send the values. I don't want to send anything. I just want to receive, basically, right? And to do so, I need to put the op that receive our array because we send an array, right? So socket cluster receive array is this guy here. I need to connect to the socket so that it it, it actually connecting. And um, in theory, so we have the client ID. Uh, just let reset the whole thing, refresh. And we have data null. So we're not really sure if it's, is it really working or, you know, because we didn't really run it on the patch and it sends a zero. So to, to make sure that it works, what I would suggest we do is to simulate an array, right? First, we need to find the right topic. By default, it's main, which we are sure it doesn't work because we called it acceleration. So now we have the right topic, but we need to run this patch from our phone to make sure that we actually receive the data we need. And you see that even though now that it's been connected, even though we, we don't even actually run it, by default, it's zero, 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 
And we see that the data that we have receiving now is 0, 0, 0. So actually the communication has been established between the two tabs here in my, in my computer, but actually going through the cable's WebSocket server, the socket cluster uh, server, and going back, right? So now we have bidirectional control. Um, unidirectional because we only send values from one patch to the other, but the channel is linked and we can exchange values very uh, easily like this. So we have our array now and a cool thing would be to uh, map it to the background. So what I did uh, with the, so that when you move your phone like this, you can change the background. So to do so, it's, we know that we have this array is always going to be three values. So we can, uh, you know, map the values and the accelerometer. So it, you can say that it's, what, what are the bounds of the accelerometer? Well, it depends how fast you go, right? If you go very fast or very slow, it's not going to be the same range. So what you can do is to first, let's, let's get the value. So it's going to be array get number. And because we have three values here, you can say, okay, I'm going to put three ops, one for X, one for Y and Y one for Z like this, X, Y, and you're going to change the index. X is at an index zero, Y is at index one, and Z is at index two. Okay, so now I'm getting, okay, three zeros, but X, Y, and Z. Now, what you can do, in, in my case, I only want you know to have the acceleration and go back to zero. So I don't really care if it's positive or negative. What I care about is whether the phone is standing and it's moving or not. So what I did is to put an apps, you know, to get the absolute value. So it's always going to be a positive value. So irrelevant of the orientation, whether you push your phone forward or backwards, it doesn't really matter for me as long as you move it, right? So I'm just remapping this, making sure that the values that we get are positive. So for now, it's exactly the same up for the three dimensions. Then I can, I can basically do a map range and we also covered that in previous videos. So basically it says, okay, I'm going to have some values as input and they're going to range from, I don't know, uh, well, if it's apps, it's going to be, I don't know, the minimum is going to be zero for sure when the phone is still, but the maximum value is going to be five. Or if it's above five, it doesn't matter. It's going to be, you know, maximum five or above. And then I want to remap this, this range from zero to five to a color. And we know that the colors are three channels, red, green, and blue. And they are, they are here. They are, you know, bound by on between zero and, and one, right? So zero, zero is, you know, uh, minimum value. If I put to one, I'm going to have something really fully red if I put the other to zero. So now by doing this map range and saying, okay, now the new mean is going to be zero and the maximum is going to be one. Basically, I'm going to divide by five the value that I get from the acceleration in X and then mapping that to the number red, for instance. I can do the same thing. I like, you can, we can have put, you know, the same range for everything, but by basically duplicating three times uh, here the ops, you can change the range. You say, oh, no, I want X to be between zero and five, but Y between, you know, zero and three, for instance. So this is just uh, to allow uh, you to have more flexibility in the way you create uh, the mapping to your color, for instance, right? So here I've mapped everything to X, Y, Z, and, and now it should work. So let, maybe we should test it uh, first. So um, I'm not really sure how to send the value, but I'll send the URL, but let's, let's check this. I'm going to unconnect this just to test without my phone. I'm going to put this and move here, you know, the value. And in theory, I'm, here you see that it changed, right? I'm going back, changing the Y value to, you know, it's, it's an acceleration of minus four. And here, you know, it's a combination of the two values here. So it works, right? I'm sending values back and forth between our two patches and it works. And of course, now we can reconnect this to the motion sensor and this will be controlled by this value. Instead of being set by me, it's going to be set by the way you move your phone. All right. So this is one part of the patch that basically will be able to uh, change the background according to how you move your phone, as I showed you in the intro. Now, something that I wanted to a bit more complex that I wanted also to uh, to show is how to, when you move your phone, that is also moves an object on the screen. So there is a way to get 
the value. As you know, here we have orientation, alpha, beta, and gamma, which is tells us the phone is it going to be like this, like this, or like this. But there is something really wrong about using uh, just the, those three values. They are very natural, right, to get, okay, this is one angle, this is the other angle, and that's the, the last one. But if you do that, you will run into a problem that is called the gimbal lock, which basically uh, um, creates some artifacts, and you see that something is going to block, and then the, the cube or the other 3D shape is going to be able to it's going to turn around very rapidly and not going to be sure why. So I'm not going to explain everything because first there is a very cool uh, YouTube video about this that I'm going to share after, but you can um, check the quaternion, uh, quaternion from three blue, one brown, which is one of the best videos I've watched on this uh, topic and uh, it tells you exactly and explain. So it's, it's a big long way, like 3D videos, 30 minutes, but you have to trust me on this. Uh, you, can, you don't have to trust me, you have to experiment it yourself. If you just take um, those three values and you send it and you try to rotate the camera or the object with this, it's gonna block at some point and the, you know, the orientation is gonna be junky, it's not gonna be very smooth. Fortunately, there is a cool way to uh, go about you know, past this issue is to use the quaternions, and which is a basically higher dimension to map those those three angles from the Euro space. So, you know, um, the angles from zero to 360 degrees to a higher dimension, which makes it more smooth. Um, and I'm being very, you know, um, not detailed about this. I really encourage you uh, to uh, watch the videos if you're interested in learning more about this. I'm just gonna show you how to get those values and to make sure that it's very smooth for your patches. So, uh, the the you know the mistake would be to use those those uh, three values and it's not going to be working very well but the cables team already also implemented the cool op that basically does the transformation that we want and very smooth for us and to do so, and so we're going to use an op called um if i recall correctly it's called uh let's type type it quaternion it's not called quaternion it's called and device something orientation camera yes this guy here and so this will basically get this, those uh, three values could map it into this higher dimensional space and change a matrix a view matrix and then we also have to talk about what is the view matrix and all the model matrices so matrices so which is in in one word, and I'm gonna also link to some cool resources about the topic. It's a way of, you know, for your patch to work or any scene in, in 3D, you have a way of describing how objects are put in space and how the camera behaves. So where is it, where it is, sorry, in the, in the scene and how it can rotate, you know, or and translate in one or like in, in our case, three different direction. And this is implemented by doing a, a math operation, which is called a matrix multiplication which is basically like having an Excel uh, you know, array that you multiply. And uh, I'm very, very loose about this. Sorry for the, you know, the more hardcore guys here following the channel. Uh, I'm gonna link some short tutorial. Maybe I'll do another video just on this. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be a bit fast and say, I trust me on this, but if you don't trust me, you can always go view the, the code. And basically, you know, this is what I was talking about, getting the, the matrix, the view matrix, and then creating quaternions, do the rotation, and uh, you know converting into different angles, the cosine and sine when you turn, and so forth, thing like this. So you can of course investigate the whole uh, the whole code here if you guys want. But to get this very simply, you can connect it to the main loop, and be, and get the here, the, the the thing that you put below will or automatically be being moved, and because the camera will rotate. Uh, using the mobile sensor, the device orientation camera. So let's put uh, Lambert material so that we can color our cube. Cube here. So we have a cube. And once again, because this is not run on the phone, uh, you're not going to be able to see it, but I can show it to you here. So if you uh, uh, let me just check. Yeah, if you like this, if you do, now I run this patch, it will basically look like this, like the cube, as you can see on my phone here, 
moves as I move the phone, right? And what, what I mean by that is not that the cube is moving in space and we have to talk just a, a bit more about, you know, where objects are in space and what the camera does, because this is, as the name implies, is already rotating the camera. So the camera is mapped by the mobile sensor, but this cube in space is still put at zero, 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 like the, the beginning of the scene. So to make this analogy, imagine that you have um, two objects, this, this beef here, it's called beef, uh, is our cube in the scene. So it doesn't move, it's always at one point, at zero, zero, zero in space. And what we do here, this is our camera. <laughs> and what we do with the mobile phone, the sensor is basically to, you know, move around the camera, right? So we move it according to our, but we always look at the same, uh, or we move it like this, if you want, right? So the cube to us, because it's projected on a 2D screen, seems that this guy is actually moving, but it's not. It's still insane at the same place, but the camera itself is moving like this. So this is pretty cool, but sometimes, especially if you want to send this information to the patch, the receiving patch, you want to keep your objects uh, to, the ca to have basically the, the control of the camera because you want to do something else with the camera, but you would like to still get this effect, this orientation and rotation that in our mobile patch comes from the camera and basically get this matrix, this transformation matrix and send it as data to our receiving patch so that you can move the object. Because to put an object in space or to put a camera in space, it's always working with the same uh, underlying matrices, so the same underlying um, set of 16 values to move things around. So the trick here would be to capture how the camera is moving here and send it using an array to the receiving patch. So let's go back here. How do you get basically the matrix from the camera? Well, in this case, there's an op that does, does it for us, which is called the get the view matrix, because we know this is about the camera. So it's about how we view things, not where they are placed in space. So we can connect this here and you see that we have this 16 value array. And if we move our camera, this 16 value will, will also actually move. So now that we have this view matrix, we can use exactly the same technique because it's an array, right? And send it. I'm copy pasting the send array. I'm changing the name. It's not acceleration. It's going to be called, I don't know, orientation, for instance. Orientation matrix, if you want. Matrix. Send it. So I'm connecting this. I'm also connecting the socket. And I need to send it. And I'm going to use the same trick, the nth trigger. So uh, that you know, maybe once we reach the view matrix, so this is being refreshed 60 times per second, I'm gonna put the nth trigger after it. So it's gonna be 30 because I'm dividing by two. And then I'm gonna send this over the network. So now basically my patch here is done. If you run this on your phone, you will have the orientation of the cube and the acceleration that will change the background, okay? So this, this is the only part that we needed to, uh, to send some values. And then you can send an array, but as I showed you, you can send, uh, I didn't show you, but as you can see here, you can send an object, you can send a trigger, you can send a string, everything that you want from one patch to the other one. So this, this, is, this is done here, we can, we can save it. Now we can go back to our mobile control patch. We already knew that the acceleration worked that as we tested by hand. Now we need to get the, the orientation matrix that we sent and transform it into a way of transforming the, the objects that we put in space. So first we can, you know, uh, put an object. So first I'm going to put the material and we talked about this. A material is a way to uh, control how to color the points of our geometry, the vertices of our geometry. And if we need to put a geometry, so a shape, uh, the, the one that I used was that you can use the cube but you can use the, the eco, uh, ecosahedron, ecosahedron here, ecosahedron, or any shape, triangle. Uh, you could have used the sphere, right? But because it's a sphere, you're not going to be able to see it turn. So it's better to try with something, uh, you know, several faces so that you make sure that, uh, that it actually works. And as you can see, uh, 
it's a bit zoomed in. So, and this is why I, the, the trick was to separate the camera itself from the uh, transform from the object uh, transform. So here first, I'm gonna put the transform view or orbit control as we already know to be able to you know move things around. And I know that my my shape is a bit too too big, so I can also scale it down, right? I can put a transform or a scale. It doesn't really matter here, and I can say, hey, move the scale a bit, you know, down like this. What I did in my demo patch was also to create um, a grid, so we have an idea of where things are in space. So to do so, I can create a sequence to separate one from the the shape that we're gonna uh, transform and move from the rest of the of the patch so one branch is about the 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 shape the 3d shape and the other here so it's one and then the other then i'm gonna put a grid grid and you notice that by default the grid is not in the correct direction i want it to, to be you know have a rotation of uh, 90 degrees so i can put the transform and say hey can you uh, first put the scale to one but rotate in the X axis by 90 degrees and maybe put it down right so that we see the shape that you know above the grid it gives us a nice perspective and as you can see because we have this orbit control I can still use my mouse to uh, have to to go around my, my scene right so as I said before I'm, we're gonna completely disconnect the way we were using the view matrix from the mobile uh, patch but here we just try and get the matrix but we don't care about uh, the, cam the camera itself, we can control it differently as, with, as here with the orbit controls, for instance. But we still need to get the, the data. So we know that's an array, right? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put the array here. I know that we called it orientation matrix. And I still know, and I know that I have to connect it to the socket here. And in theory, if all goes well, at some point, we should be able to get the, the matrix. And when we get the matrix, if I orientation matrix and orientation matrix, okay. But still, it has to move. For now, it doesn't move, but it still should be okay. Array undefined, which is better than nothing, you see. Now we get the value. So just a, a bit of way to that the socket connects, goes back to the server and goes back to our patch. So now we have the data and we need a way to use this array to transform our, our shape, right? So remember that with this up, I can you know, move it and I can rotate it like this. But as you notice, the rotation here are three values and position are three values. But what we get here is this matrix that uh, has 16, have 50, 16 values. So we need a way to basically ditch this transform node and use the matrix directly. And to do so, we're gonna use an op that is called multiply, multiply model matrix, because this is a model that we put in our space, right? So the 3D, think of a model as a 3D model that we put in space. And uh, this transformation is exactly equivalent to doing this multiplication. If you look at the code, this is exactly what you would see. You would see that it's the matrix and you multiply, and it's exactly the same thing that happens here. Uh, if you are curious and you know how to code, right? Multiply. So it's exactly the same operation. It's not the same API here. It's easier for it's easy for us to understand. Okay, position, scale, rotation. But all of this is also included in this uh, matrix. So I'm gonna ditch the transform here, put this multiply uh, matrix instead, and connect the the value from the patch from the other patch. And now, in theory, if you save, everything should work. So by moving the patch from here with your mobile, this should work. And you can test it at home, of course. And I hope that this was not uh, too fast. This is more, I would say, more intermediate patch. But I really wanted to, to show you that uh, it's feasible to, uh, to be more creative um, in the way you control your patches. So just to um, show it again to you, the, the one that I did, which is exactly uh, the same. Um, let me put back here. So this is the, the thing that we copied, right? So this is my mobile patch. And this is the one that is controlled. And as you can see, it's exactly the same uh, 
I just map the values here. I put some smooth, so it's an up. If you if you think that the acceleration is too fast, you can also smooth the value so that it goes a bit uh, uh, smoother, right? So you can change the factor here, but it's exactly the same uh, uh, up, and then you should do, be able to do something like this with nice with the you know background and music. So I hope that this uh, tutorial was uh, informative to you and that you you liked it. Um, I'm planning on doing more tutorials, uh, especially related to programming, because I, as you, as you sh saw, I'm often, often you know, going here and viewing the code so that people that know how to code uh, understand a bit more what happens under the hood. But I thought that maybe it would be a good idea to uh, also do like maybe an in, you know, initiation to programming with cables. So we first you know, work our way with the ops, and then we try to reproduce what we do with ops with code and create our own ops. Uh, you know, because sometimes you don't have an app that does it, that, that's exactly what you want to do. And I think it's the, to re get 100% out of cables, um, it's, it's better to know how to program. So you can maybe get 99%, but you know, if you know the extra programming, um, you know, layer on top, you can create apps that, you know, and contribute to the community and be able to share or integrate new libraries and everything into the, the, the cables world. So, if you if you think that's a good idea, let me know in the comments. If you like to have one topic that you you know a particular topic you want me to cover, let me know in the comments. Uh, and otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.